In a world where everyday objects become the vessels of our deepest fears, one unsuspecting man stumbles upon a delivery that promises more than just a package. From the quiet corners of suburban life to the battle against an ancient evil, prepare to journey into the heart of darkness itself. Welcome to The Prime Trap. Will you dare to unbox the terror? The sun hung lazily in the sky, casting long shadows over the quiet suburban neighborhood of Willow Creek. Children rode their bikes on the sidewalks, their laughter echoing through the air, while the distant hum of lawnmowers provided a comforting background noise. Life was predictable here, and that's how the residents liked it. John Mitchell stood at his window, watching the outside world with a distant gaze. His once lively home felt cold and empty, a stark contrast to the warmth outside. The recent divorce had taken a toll on him, leaving a gaping hole where his heart once was. The house, which used to reverberate with the sounds of a loving family, now echoed his solitude. But there was one thing that still brought a glimmer of excitement to his life. Online shopping. The anticipation of a new package. The thrill of unboxing. These small joys kept him going. As he sipped his lukewarm coffee, he noticed the familiar blue and white van approaching. Ah, today's distraction, he murmured to himself, setting the cup down. The Amazon delivery driver, a young woman with a ponytail, left a medium-sized box on his porch and drove away. But there was something odd. John didn't remember ordering anything recently. Shrugging it off as forgetfulness, he opened the door and picked up the package. It was surprisingly heavy. He checked the label, but there was no return address only his name written in a rushed, almost frantic handwriting. Curiosity peaked, John took the box to his living room. The tape gave way easily, and as he opened the flaps, an unexpected rush of cold air hit him. It was empty. No packing slip, no item, just... emptiness. He peered inside, expecting to find something, anything. But the darkness seemed to stretch on, deeper than the box's dimension should allow. A shiver ran down his spine. Shaking off the eerie feeling, he decided to contact Amazon's customer service later. As the day turned into night, John went about his usual routine, but he couldn't shake off the nagging feeling about the box. It sat there, in the middle of his living room, a silent enigma. As he lay in bed trying to drift into sleep, he heard it, a faint whisper, like the rustling of paper. Dismissing it as the wind, he turned to his side. But then, footsteps. Light, almost childlike, tiptoeing across the hardwood floor. And just as he was about to call out, thinking maybe it was a burglar, he heard the softest, most chilling chuckle. The night was long, filled with strange noises and cold drafts. By morning, John was convinced of one thing. The box was no ordinary package, and it had brought something with it, something dark, something that lurked in the shadows of his home. As the days went on, the strange occurrences around John's house only grew in frequency and intensity. Every night, as the sun dipped below the horizon, he would hear those soft, sinister whispers, always originating from near the box. He'd often find it moved from its original position, even though he distinctly remembered placing it in the attic. It was as if the box had a mind of its own. His neighbors, Mrs. Thompson and Mr. Green, both elderly and living alone, started complaining about their missing pets. Mrs. Thompson's Siamese cat, Whiskers, had disappeared without a trace, and Mr. Green's golden retriever, Max, hadn't been seen in days. The neighborhood was abuzz with theories, wild animals, thieves, or just the pets wandering off. But John had a sinking feeling that the box was involved. One evening, after a particularly unnerving encounter where the box had appeared on his bedside table, John decided to dispose of it. He bundled it up in thick ropes, weighing it down with bricks, and threw it into the community lake. That should do it, he thought, a weight lifting off his shoulders. But the next morning, as he stepped out to fetch his newspaper, there it was, sitting on his porch, wet and dripping, 
as if mocking his futile attempts. Panic gripped him. He realized this wasn't something he could simply discard. It was bound to him, feeding off his loneliness and fear. Desperate, John turned to the internet, diving deep into forums about the supernatural and cursed objects. He learned about mimics, creatures that could disguise themselves as inanimate objects, lying in wait for their next victim. The descriptions matched the box's behavior. But how could a simple Amazon delivery box become such a creature? Things took a darker turn when Timmy, the ten-year-old from next door, curiously approached the box one sunny afternoon. John, who was in his study, heard a sharp scream. Rushing out, he saw the box, its flaps open wide, and Timmy's sneakers sticking out, being slowly pulled in. John lunged, grabbing Timmy's legs, engaging in a deadly tug of war with the box. With a Herculean effort, he managed to pull Timmy out. The boy was in shock, his face pale, eyes wide with terror. He muttered about endless darkness cold winds, and whispering voices inside the box. Word of the incident spread like wildfire, but no one believed John's story. They thought it was a prank gone wrong, or Timmy's overactive imagination. The box seemed to grow more restless with each passing day. At night, John would hear it move, its cardboard flaps shuffling almost as if it were breathing. The darkness inside it seemed endless, a void that threatened to consume everything. The whispers grew louder, more insistent, sometimes morphing into grotesque laughter. John knew he couldn't face this entity alone. He reached out to a local paranormal expert, Dr. Eleanor Harwood, who had experience dealing with haunted objects. Skeptical at first, Eleanor agreed to visit John's house after hearing about Timmy's ordeal. Upon seeing the box, Eleanor's demeanor changed. She sensed the malevolence radiating from it. After a series of tests and rituals, she confirmed John's fears. The box housed a powerful entity, a mimic that had taken on the form of an innocent Amazon package. Eleanor explained that such entities were drawn to negative emotions, feeding off despair, loneliness, and fear. John's post-divorce vulnerability had made him an ideal target. The box didn't just want to frighten him, it wanted to consume him, trap him in its endless void. Realizing they needed to act fast, Eleanor devised a plan. Using a combination of salt, holy water, and ancient rituals, they would attempt to trap the entity, rendering the box harmless. But it wouldn't be easy. The mimic was powerful and wouldn't be subdued without a fight. The night of the exorcism was stormy. Thunder rumbled in the distance as Eleanor began her incantations. The box reacted violently, shaking, levitating, its dark void swirling with shadows. Suddenly, it morphed, taking on the shape of various household objects, a lamp, a chair, a vase, trying to deceive and lure them closer. John, armed with a salt circle and holy water, stayed close to Eleanor, protecting her as she chanted. But the mimic was cunning. It shifted into the form of John's ex-wife, her face twisted in agony, pleading with him to come closer. The sight shook John to his core. But Eleanor's voice, strong and unwavering, snapped him back to reality. The battle raged on for hours. The house shook, windows shattered, and shadows danced on the walls. But as dawn approached, the mimic's power waned. Eleanor's chants grew louder, more forceful, and with a final ear-piercing scream, the entity was trapped once again within the confines of the box. Exhausted, John and Eleanor sat amidst the wreckage of the living room. The box, now just a box, lay dormant, but the threat wasn't over. Eleanor warned John that the entity, though trapped, was still alive. The box needed to be buried in consecrated ground, away from human touch. The aftermath of the exorcism left John's home in disarray, but the true damage was to his psyche. The mimic's attempts to lure him using the visage of his ex-wife had reopened old wounds. Eleanor, seeing his distress, suggested he seek therapy, emphasizing that healing his mind was as crucial as banishing the entity. But the task of dealing with the box remained. 
Eleanor had procured a map pointing to an ancient burial ground, known for its power to contain malevolent entities. The duo, with the box securely locked in a chest adorned with protective symbols, set out on a journey to this secluded spot. The burial ground, nestled deep within a dense forest, was eerie. Tall, gnarled trees stood like silent sentinels, their leaves whispering secrets. A thick mist covered the ground, and an old stone altar sat in the center. This was the place. Following Eleanor's instructions, John dug a deep hole near the altar. As they prepared to lower the chest, a chilling wind blew, and for a moment, John thought he heard the faintest of whispers emanating from the box. But he steeled himself, remembering all he had endured. The chest was buried, and Eleanor performed one last ritual to seal it. As they left the burial ground, the weight that had oppressed John for so long seemed to lift. The sun broke through the clouds, casting a warm, golden hue on everything. The world felt brighter, more hopeful. Weeks turned into months, and John's life regained a semblance of normalcy. The horrors of the mimic felt like a distant nightmare. He often thought of Eleanor, who had become a close friend and confidant. Together, they had faced pure evil and emerged victorious. But as with all tales of horror, the peace was short-lived. In a town miles away, a man opened his door to find a package. No return address, just a simple Amazon logo. Curious, he took it inside, unaware of the darkness he had just invited into his home. Thank you for journeying with us into the depths of the Prime Trap. If this tale sent shivers down your spine, please hit that like button and subscribe for more spine-tingling stories. Sleep tight, listeners.